and welcome to today's video. In this video we'll be discussing the power of AMD's TerraScale 2 GPU and the power it possesses in 2017. Now when I was cleaning my usual graphics card, the R9 280, I needed a cheap replacement to last me a week or so to my thermal paste we back off a friend. However, in this I decided to go down to my local Kex and purchase the HD6870. Released in October 2010, codenamed Bart's XT, it was a mid-range card designed to compete with Nvidia's mid-range 500 series while consuming less power than its predecessor, the HD5870. A full list of technical specifications placed to the right in case you're interested in finding out a little bit more of the card in a bit more depth than I'm about to explain. The technical specifications of the card include a core of 900 MHz, 1 GB of GDDR3 and a frequency of 1050 MHz. The TDP is 151 watts, much less than the 500 series it was competing with and its predecessor the 5870. With a retail price of £220 in October 2010, we can see that the card, it was alright for the specs it came out with. Our well, price in 2017, however, is only £23. I'd place a modern day equivalent around the R7 250 such as the 260. It's in between power wise, however, it lacks some of the modern architecture that these ones do. We tested all today's games on the Crimson 16.2.1 drivers, released on the 3rd of the 1st of the 16th. Grand Theft Auto 5 here first. We're seeing settings nearing an in between point of the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. The game runs at a constantly 30 plus FPS and rarely ever dips much lower than 37, unless, of course, we're driving, which is where we hit the minimum of 34. The drops are very similar throughout an entire hour gameplay and the clips here are representative of this. As you can see, driving was completely fine as we go throughout the streets of Los Santos. The game is a game that I play on a regular basis and many people play on a regular basis so it's, it's all well and good to try out the card. As you can see here, fight with the police in the airport, we sit, hit 60 FPS. We left V-Sync off for this session and of course the game was completely smooth throughout and I could recommend playing Grand Theft Auto 5 on this card no matter where you are really. Next, followed up by Counter-Strike GO. Running at the default high settings, we see the game only ever dips below 60 FPS once. This is of course being to a minimum of 58 FPS. This in turn can easily be resolved by reducing the eye candy to low, or alternatively removing shadows or running in DirectX 8 mode if more FPS is required. As a competitive game, FPS is key to winning as you want the competitive edge over players. Here we of course are managing to remain on the leaderboard, at staying around our average of 86, and just it's a playable experience with this card. And of course, where would any benchmark be without the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim? Our benchmark continues to show this card is completely capable of running the game. I tend to go into this game on a weekly basis, so it's important I'm able to run it at high settings. We're running here, of course, 1080p, high settings, with a constant 60fps due to the V-Sync being enabled. We do hit a dip of a minimum to 57fps, however this is only due to loading and of course maybe minor things. Going into outside sections doesn't really cause much of a hiccup here and there. And realistically, the game runs completely flawlessly, and you'd be prepared to run the remastered among many other mods or whatever you want for this game. It runs flawlessly, and I wouldn't comment anything other below that. Up next, a more demanding title here. Bethesda's Fallout 4, achieving an average of 32 FPS at 1080p. A remarkable feat for a graphics card of this age. Of course, the game lacking anti-aliasing as we opted for the less intensive FXAA, have the strong 1080p resolution and the lower quality textures mask this effect quite nicely. A drop in resolution would most likely up the FPS to the high 40s, or maybe even high 50s. And of course, you'd be able to increase some settings here or there and remain around the 30 FPS average we've achieved. The game ran absolutely amazing for what, well, it's not that optimised, and this card is powering through it amazingly well. I'd say I could have a playable experience and quite enjoy the game on this graphics card. However here we do actually see some stuttering. The game drops to a very low 20 FPS, which is the minimum we achieved. This may be due to the VRAM constraints of 1 gigabyte. Finally, we couldn't show off this card without Doom. Knowing how well AMD's CGN architecture fares in the game, albeit with Vulcan enabled, we see TerraScale 2 struggle here. Likely to the age of the card and the lack of Vulcan slash DirectX 12 support, the card has no advantage of Vulcan's rendering mode leaving it obsolete even on the lowest settings. Even turning down resolution caused little to no change, and although the games are smooth, it's still only 12 to 17 FPS. The stutter doesn't exist, but still with lack of async compute support, this card is really beginning to show its age in modern gaming. Personally, in my opinion, this is where we first begin to see the card struggle. In a game that's heavily dependent on OpenGL and Vulcan, we see the card lacks no support for future games. So of course, where would we be without the conclusion? I'd have to conclude by saying this card remains a little surprised at the low £23 price tag it carries. As a small time replacement for my R9285, it held its own and proved itself to run the majority of games and tests with really good performance. It shows its price to performance is very high. 
course, this card is drivers for AMD Crimson, allowing for overclocking through AMD Overdrive to squeeze out a little bit more performance should you feel the need to get a few more FPS here or there. The card remains a cool 65 degrees and was silent throughout all games run, and has a range of ports on the back which worked well with a full monitor array which I can confirm ran flawlessly. However, this is of course not without its disadvantages. The, get, the card is relying on older APIs, rendering the card useless in games to come, as it has no DirectX 12 or Vulkan support. High, albeit not bad TDP, may mean you need a higher wattage power supply to run the card. This may involve you having to spend more money, negating its price to performance aspect. The lack of driver support since 2016 means newer games may stutter or even refuse to work. It's also worth noticing that it has no VCE support unlike my R9285, meaning all recording is dependent on either QuickSync or your CPU. For £23, however, I must say it's an amazing card for older titles running up to Fallout 4 and GTA 5 with a mix of high, low and medium settings. The multiple array of display outputs makes it great in a low budget entertainment or even backup PC. I must say thank you for watching Budget Builds Official tonight. Have a good evening.